Today's receiver of maintenance will be the Macintosh Center 610. This unit has a Motorola 68K processor lacking a FPU. That's a floating point unit. Without the FPU, this unit's unable to boot the uh, Apple Unix, which would be the whole reason for me really wanting to uh, maintain this in the collection. Of course, it does run, <clears throat> and it is currently running OS 8.5, um, which is the highest available for this model on the um, the pre OS X, you know, OS classic line of Mac OS. It does perform pretty well. I've added video RAM, um, and I've kitted out the memory to uh, 64 meg, which for its day, when it came to me, it only had four. Let's go ahead and get the cover off this, and uh, we will do a processor upgrade. I have ordered a <clears throat> full 68K processor, um, unlike the crippled one from our friends at Apple in 1993. This unit from Hong Kong, if you can see the chip, is a full 6080. So, um, the 68K chip does not have the LC, it actually does have a full floating point unit. Um, so, this is going to be what's going to go in our machine. Uh, there is no heat sink on this, it does not produce enough heat to need a heat sink. So, let's go ahead and, like I said, I'll, I'll pull the top off, we'll go through this. So, first steps first, we're going to slide the chassis back carefully as we can. And then sliding on the anti static mat. There we go. These plastic tabs are super fragile at this age. I really am not wanting to. There we go. You have to lift up just a little bit, and the whole chassis lifts up. There we go. And then push it forward just a bit. So, see, it's not broken on this one. It's still in pretty good condition. And I'm going to keep it that way. Now, inside the machine, oh, I also forget to mention the, um, I took the physical spinny disc out, and I've upgraded that with a SCSI SD. So the SCSI SD did take some work. Um, Apple decided that you couldn't use a normal hard drive uh, of any variety in the day, so you have to emulate one of about three or four different models of Apple hard drive. Um, and then once you emulate the um, serial number and model number and all of that with the SCSI to SD, uh, it also can't recognize anything above two gigabytes, and yet again, yet one more Apple thing to do to you, um, you have to format it with a blessed utility uh, to write a driver and a lead-in um, on the file system. So if it doesn't see that tattoo on the file system, it will just straight up not recognize the disk. The installers won't recognize it. Um, thankfully, the um, uh, you can emulate a floppy, or you can you can write a floppy disk with a physical floppy drive. You have USB floppy around, uh, and then you can take that image and um, you can boot and uh, bless the hard drive uh, SD card partition. In this case, this um, SCSI SD does emulate uh, up to four, and I do have it emulating four hard drives on this machine. Um, one will be my OS eight applications and my OS eight operating system. The other one uh, was going to be uh, the Apple AUX. So um, the memory you can see here, 72 pin SIM. Right behind it is the video memory. Let's see if we get a little closer here. Sorry, don't mind the jiggling. But I'm not editing any of this. You're just getting a straight shot of this um, camera movement here. So <laughs> deal with it. Um, that being said, uh, there is an optional riser card here. This is a um, this is a, this is an annoyance because this particular one, and good luck finding one on eBay these days. But um, the riser card is a it is a processor direct slot, a PDS slot. So um, typical for my vintage of Macs, I'm usually working with. I have new bus slots, which kind of dates you know when I'm usually working with the Macs. Um, so with a PDS slot, you have to have a PDS to new bus adapter, and it provides a right angle, and then also has a tray that fits in here and everything else. So here's the plan for today. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take our brand new happy little chip and our vintage chip, broken as it may be, is still a beautiful piece of history. So I'm going to get the proper size anti-static. This is an entire anti-static workstation. Uh, my other wrist is grounded for purposes of not having to have it string around in front of the camera. Uh, and this is a 3D printed 68K removal tool that I found on the interwebs um, on Thingiverse. If you type 68K on Thingiverse, you'll find it. I 
apologies to the author, I can't remember the name, but thank you. Um, I was going to have to make something, and uh, I was like, you know, check and see if I 3D print a tool. So this is apparently common enough that someone's print, someone has a, a file up on Thingiverse, so we're going to go ahead and lift this chip out. So, first things first here, um, I'm going to move the cables out of the way because I do not want that. Let's take the strap off. There we go. And lift this guy back here. Oh, yeah, I had to change the CMOS battery too. Forgot to mention that one as well. So, um, we are going to slide this over the top of our chip friend here. as it is. Oh, there we go. Let's move it from the other direction. There we go. Okay. We're going to just work it onto the chip. And I'm going to provide a... a um, it's been a long time since I've done this. Previously I had a proper tool. This looks like way better than what I used to use. Um, and provide a firm but steady force. I'm going to use one hand to steady the force on sides of the tool and then another hand to pull straight up. The chip has given way, and then it will fall out of this holder, but you can see the underside, no bent pins, great condition. I lay our anti-static pad on bottom, I'm going to slide the processor out. This is a functional chip and I do not wish to harm it. Now, an important note. These old sockets are not as forgiving as they are currently. That's very interesting. That's a uh, piece of grass. Huh, okay. Somehow made its way underneath the socket. Um, while placing the new chip in the socket, you'll notice a white mark on the corner of the processor. This is this is pin one, or last pin. I don't know. I also didn't look at the data sheet. I don't care. But basically, the important part is it needs to line up. So if we look on bottom of this chip, you're going to see... There's a void here on this side that matches a void here, opposite of the white dot. And the white dot here will match up with our arrow corner mark, first pin mark. Okay, So the void is going to go where there's a missing pin. Arrow should go there. We have both of those. We know we're oriented properly. I'm going to gently lay the chip on top. And I'm going to use my eyes to get down here. And I'm going to provide get all the leads started in the socket, and then I'm going to provide steady downward first force across the entire chip with both hands. And it slides right in. Okay. Again, no heat sink on this, right? It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Um, and I'm going to take some isopropyl real quick because I want this to be pretty, so give me a second. If it's not apparent, I'm a bit particular about this machine. I haven't cleaned it super thoroughly, obviously. A little bit of dust isn't going to hurt anybody, but I also don't want it to be looking like it was just chipped by a heathen. Understand. It's a thing of love. I'm in here. Might as well get these other guys. Ah. Oh. A little better than we found it, huh? I don't need to go super thorough. I don't care that much, but functional is the name of the game, yeah? Okay. Let's go ahead and toss this filthy isopropyl rag. What do you guys think? Ready to uh, ready to turn and burn? All right, let me get this guy closed back up. Ta-da! Well, cables are at least plugged back in. Um, let's get the chassis back on now. All right, you're gonna see it right along with me. I'm so confident that this is gonna happily work. I'm not gonna really test it beforehand, so. Um, let's hope the uh, Hong Kong chip from Malaysia doesn't blow up my uh, Sentra 610 I'm quite fond of. That's a good sound. Let's see if we get some monitor output. The Apple desktop bus Wombat has lit up. I'll give an example of that here in a second if I remember. And uh, this is not entirely uncommon. This monitor is a bit of a piece of trash. Hold on. By the way, don't buy one of these. There's that glorious junk logo. That's input. Come on, you dog. There. 
Okay. Yep. Auto input detection for some reason has trouble with a VGA. Um, or it might be presence detect, possibly, with the way that the uh, Apple uh, connector, the, was it? HD15. Is that what it is? I don't remember. That D sub that they use, that's not a standard D sub for anything else VGA later on in the world. Um, I have an example. One of these deals, if you're unaware what it is, it uh, allows you to plug your Apple monitor into your VGA monitor. Apple monitor port into your VGA. I can't talk. Anyhow, looks like she's loading up. And then uh, for those of you who see my SGI videos, there's a uh, 13W3 connector. Um, the silicon graphics machines, of course, require that, along with the Sun Microsystems computers. I don't keep too many of those anymore. Larry Ellison sort of ruined Sun for me, um, which is a damn shame. They built some beautiful boxes. And I think the only thing I've got left from Sun is my um, Ultra 40 workstation. I tossed the uh, Netras and some of the other gear I had. Well, the Netras were kind of trash. I'd one new Netras that had a terrible processor on them that I had to install via um, Telnet, if I recall. There's no VGA output on those. There's like there's no monitor output on those little Netras. So that was trash. All right, this guy's gonna load up. Um, let's see what it reports here. Da -da 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 -da. Come on. This blazing speed you're used to. This is um this is normal for this machine at its vintage. And I apologize for the refresh rate on the camera. I don't know if there's a way I can get around that, unfortunately. Or if I get closer, if it's the only thing the camera can see, or is it just going to destroy focus? Yeah, bad attempt. I apologize. Let's uh, let's not do that to you. Sorry, not trying to give you a seizure there. Anyhow, um, fraction munchers, number munchers, yeah, word munchers, and of course there's organ trail on here, but you know that's a given, right? Still booting out. Uh, so I should mention too, in addition to the web sharing extension you see coming up, uh, this machine does have um, uh, software, Dave, actually. It's called Dave uh, for this vintage of Mac that lets it communicate. Um, I did have to make some changes to Samba. That error does every now and then. Um, it's like a race condition. I think something's supposed to start up before the, uh, um, the other things. But you see it actually did connect. So open share and media are two shares on my network. Um, that are Windows shares on a modern Rocky 8 Linux machine um, that it is able to mount with no problem. Uh, two, actually. Two Rocky 8 Linux machines. Um, either way, though, once Samba's configured properly, you won't have a problem. So let's go to About This Computer and see kind of what we have here. So, you guys, there's Mac OS 8.1. Look at that. Finder. Eating a whole 12.7 megabytes of memory. 68 mega memory right there. Let's go to system profiler here. I still get confused because in OS X you go to about this Mac and you click on system profiler. I'm, it's been years. <laughs> so um, there we go. Centris 610, 68040 at 20 megahertz. Um, awesome. So she's right on where she claimed she was. Uh, and you can also see, let's talk about her video memory. Is it in here? Am I missing it guys? Is she going to yell at me? Where's the video memory at? Or is it somewhere bespoke and hidden device information, maybe? Oh, no, that's my... Well, it wasn't where I was meaning to go, but... Um, yeah, so you see, actually, I did on the SCSI IDs, I did hard drive zero is the one we've mounted, and it's this, it's obviously not a Seagate ST225N with all the spaces, but this is what all of the forums on the planet said was required, uh, and it seems to be accurate. It did detect the hard drive at that point after I blessed it and tattooed it. Um, again, that's that's you've got to format it with a, a utility that'll make it happy there. Uh, IDs 1 and 2 I left blank for external. I have an external SCSI CD-ROM, which is actually a load of the operating system. Um, unlike my Silicon Graphics machines of this vintage, you cannot net install these, or at least that I know of. So if you can network install them, uh, that's cool. I'd love to learn. Uh, not a thing I know I can do right now, so... Go back to... Oh, I closed it. Back to System Profiler. Da -da 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 -da. And control panel extension. I don't know that it's gonna. 
Oh well. I thought there was somewhere it would show me video memory on here, and I'm probably being too dense to find it. I do know I can turn the resolution higher uh, with the additional video memory. I can turn it to like true color as well, basically. Um, volume information, device information. Wait, what well, took me to volume info? Maybe did I click on device info or volume? No. What's well, silly? What is volume info then? Oh, it's actually the info on the the partitions themselves. I see. Control panel. Yeah. This ended up being a walk around a thing. I really didn't care to walk around. But anyhow, um, we'll close Profiler out because who cares about Profiler? Uh, yeah. So this guy's up and running. Uh, now my next step will be to install um, Apple Unix. Um, at some point, I'll do a video on that. Uh, I'm going to shout out to one more thing before I get off here. Excuse the litany of trash that sits on top of this thing, but this, the uh, I have not removed all the paper from it. I got so happy I just threw it together and I've been using it ever since. But ADB USB Wombat, this is amazing. So I'm going to move the mouse cursor. See that? That is a USB mouse going into a hub, being powered by the Apple desktop bus, being converted by the Wombat. So Apple um, desktop bus is receiving input from a USB hub of a modern USB keyboard and modern USB mouse and it's being converted to ADB and uh, the Apple machine is pleased as punch couldn't couldn't even tell a difference so um, pretty pretty proud of that one that's made things really awesome um, especially going back and forth between the Apple too I'm gonna order another one but currently out of stock so uh, if you guys like it then um, go order one give the guy some business I love it hopefully you guys enjoyed this um, Lighting's a bit better over here. I won't make you stare at a flickering screen, but uh, if you like it, subscribe, make comments, let me know. Um, maybe I'll shoot some more stuff on the bench if I get some people actually watching. Um, showing how to fix DNS on a on an indie machine seemed to be pretty popular. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get back to many people because I actually didn't realize anybody watches my YouTube videos. So uh, maybe I'll just make these with a guy screaming alone in the woods. If somebody watches them, they'll have a good time. But otherwise, yeah, it's for fun. Take care.